What is it like being a Jamaican who has traveled to 75 out of the 195 countries in the world? I'm Xavier Murphy, founder of Jamaicans.com, and today I talk to Dahlia Espute Jones, a Jamaican who has traveled to 75 countries and still going. Dahlia, how are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you for having me today. All right. So which part of Jamaica are you from? Well, I was born in uh, Manchester. I was born in Davidson, Man Manchester, and I grew up in Portland. Okay. All right. I know the Belvedere, Belvedere, Portland, to be exact. <laughs> All right, beautiful, beautiful parish, beautiful area. Um, yes, beautiful uh, people. Beautiful people. <laughs> so tell me which school, you know, you went to while you were there, and is there a teacher that impacted your life while you were in school in Jamaica? So I attended first um, basic school in Belvedere, then moved on to all age school slash primary school in the same district. Um, I have um, many teachers to be credited for, you know, who I am today, but I will give two. One is Miss Enid McHugh. She was the first teacher that I had at basic school who took me by the hand and showed me how to form my letters, how to count. So I have to give her credit. The other teacher that I had was um, Mrs. E.D. Shirley. She was the principal of Belvedere All Aid School. She whooped me every single day because I was <laughs> late for school every single day. And that taught me punctuality. So I have to give her credit for that. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, we know that punctuality thing. We yes. have this Jamaican time thing. But you also were, you know, you were also were, um, you know, when you came to the U.S. And I don't want to, to, to jump ahead of your story. But y'all, you know, you were military, too. So <laughs> that well, that you were programmed already to be yes. on time before the military. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your journey from Jamaica to the United States. And, you know, it sounds like it may have been as a child. Um, how, was there any type of culture shock? What, what was it like? Oh, all of the above. So, um, you know, I was raised by my grand, my, um, my paternal grandparents, my dad's parents in Belvedere, Portland from the age of three months and three weeks old. And um, at the age of 15, one day I was snatched up and brought to the United States, just like that, snatched up. I was brought to the United States in Boston, where I'm currently located right now, <laughs> visiting my best friend. But um, I lived in Boston for about two years after I left Jamaica, and I went into the military because um, growing up, you know, for those two and a half years, I was in a very toxic environment. And um, the military was the best avenue that I saw at the time, you know, to be productive in society and not be a product of society. So I joined the military in 1982 and I retired in 2004. And I've since, you know, um, been traveling extensively uh, for personal and business. That's how we came up to 75 uh, countries. I wow. did some of those traveling when I was in the military and I was fascinated. But I'm, let me share this with you really quick. Um, the mindset of traveling came from when I was a little girl in Jamaica. My grandfather sent me to a neighbor to buy these raffle tickets. And the ticket prize was you want a trip to Malta. Now looking at it, I think it was a scam. But at seven <laughs> years old, you didn't know the difference. I don't know who won. I didn't even own a passport at the time. But it was at the back of my mind that, you know what, if I have enough money or if I'm exposed to the world, I want to go to Malta. I want to travel. I haven't been to Malta yet. It's on my bucket list. Oh, I, I was about to ask. I mean, yes. I have not <laughs> okay. been to Malta so, yet. So that, that lottery ticket that you have kept all these years, yes. you haven't it's, used it. You have not it's used on it yet. my bucket list. It's on my book, my immediate bucket list, as a matter of fact, because I'm turning 60 this year and I have some countries on my list to travel to. And Malta is definitely one of them in honor of my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So tell us, tell us, I mean, you know, many countries, we won't be able to go through all of them. But what I want to narrow it down to, you have gone to 75. The which are the five countries that you really enjoyed traveling to um, out of the 75? And I know, and you know, some people may say, uh, yeah, but let's keep it to the five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, Dubai. Um, I've been to Dubai 24 times already. Um, going back again in December to celebrate my birthday. Um, I've been to Zanzibar, which is, you know, a neighboring country of Tanzania. Very Jamaican-like, very island-like. That's why I fell in love with them. Um, I love Dubai because of the bougie-ness. You know, you can be a queen when you're in Dubai. <laughs> I love that. Korea. I love, 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 love Korea. We live in Korea again. I was stationed there for three years. I was a Korean linguist for the army. I fell in love with the culture. I fell in love with the people. Ghana. Wow. What can I say about Ghana? What can I not say about Ghana? Ghana embraces Jamaica so much. Oh, my gosh. Oh Everywhere my gosh. you go in Ghana, oh. there is the Jamaican flag in a what? car, on a building. They love, love, love. They love oh. us. Oh, my gosh. They love us. They so, do. They do. I, I fell in love. It's it's now my adopted home. I even adopted a family while I was there. I love Ghana so much that my first trip was in April of 2022. Five months later, I was back in Ghana. Okay, because wow. I love it so much. And wow. the, the last country that I fell in love with was Albania. I went to Albania on a mission. And it was a crazy mission because there was a firefight going on at the time. However... I fell in love with it because it reminded me so much of Belvedere. Everything country, everything that you can think of that we saw and did in Belvedere, Portland, I saw it in Albania. So I fell in love with that culture. Wow. So so that was um, Dubai? Dubai, right. Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Korea. Korea. Ghana. Ghana and Albania. And, and Albania. Okay. Th and this is kind of... You're almost like crossing, yes, uh, you yes. know, like way across maps. Yes. Here. Different <laughs> when, when... zones, different cultures, you know, but it's all the same because, you know, at the end of the day, when I go to these countries, um, even though I adopted America as my home, I still promote Jamaica. If anyone follow me on Facebook, they'll see I'm always flying my flag. My flag, I've been to over 50 countries, the same flag, my same Jamaican flag that was donated to me by one of my best girlfriends, um, Mary Masco. And I take my flag in any country that I go to and I fly because I represent Jamaica. And you'll be surprised, you know, but well, not, I mean. It, it, it's, it, it's once you're Jamaican. It's mm -hmm. um, it opens up doors yeah. for you. When I fly and by my flag, everybody say, "Oh, Jamaica, Bob Marley." They can relate. They love us. They oh, love that, us. So, I've never so, so, encountered so, discrimination because I'm Jamaican. Oh never. my gosh, it's it's never. royalty. Um, you know, the first one that comes to mind is Zanzibar, mm -hmm. and we were my wife and I. We were running a little late for the ferry to come back to the main, mainland. And mm -hmm. once we showed them, uh, they learned that we were Jamaican. Oh, we got a, a straight up full escort, um, right? The guy was just like, the guy just like, oh, let me, just took us right through, walked us right to the ferry. They love us. <laughs> they love us. You know, so that is awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go back through the countries now, mm -hmm. right? So let's go back to your you already said you love you know the um the queen treatment in in dubai is there mm -hmm. one thing or the place you'd say if you go to dubai you got to do this what would that one thing be you tell any travelers going going there the one thing you would say you got to do this if you go to dubai the sooks it's spelled s-o-u-k the sooks there is spy sooks and sook means market so there are spice silks, gold silks, clothes silks. I mean, material silks. Anything you can think of is there. 
I love that because you meet so many people from all over the world and you meet the locals as well. And they're so welcoming. A lot of people misunderstand the, the, you know, the Middle East. They're thinking it's all about terrorism and the people are vile. Not so. You know, my first time in the Middle East was during the time that I was in, in the military in 2001. Mm. And those people embrace us. They love our blackness because you know what? At the end of the, at the end of the day, they look just like us. They wow. look just like us. So I never felt um, that I was in danger or anything like that. You know, I'm hoping to go back and live in Dubai for two years. Okay. All right. All right. So we're going one thing through each of these countries now. So the next one up, I believe, is is Korea, mm -hmm. right? What is that one thing you'd say you got to do if you go to Korea? You got to sit with a local to learn the language and the culture because, you know, they do do some things differently. You know, the way that you um, you give someone something, you know, you you have there's a certain way you present to that person. There's a certain way you speak to the elders. So. Um, I say mix with the local populace, mix with the people and learn their culture. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. And Korea is right. like that. It's a friendly place. Very friendly. Oh, yeah. I, I Very indeed. Indeed. All right. Next one up is, is it Ghana? Ghana. <laughs> so what do you, uh, apart from, and I, I mean, I, I, I've been a couple, two times, so I know the feeling, but what's that absolute one thing you would say? If you're traveling to Ghana, you must do. If you're traveling to Ghana, I would say go to the rope bridges. They have um, the canopy, the, the canopy walk. I forgot the name of the location. Um, yeah, it's up in the hills. It's way up there in the hills. Yeah. Yes, do that <laughs> for the physical aspect, but also culturally go to the castle, the slave castles. And when you go to the castles, bring your tissue because it's going to be very emotional. You learn so much about us and you will actually see how Jamaica fits in all of this because we came from, you know, we derived from there. Yeah, um, yeah, and they talk yeah. about that. Yeah, they, they certainly do. Um, all right. Albania. <laughs> Albania. Yes. I was deployed to Albania. I think it was in 1999. Um, they were having some issues with transporting containers back to central region, back to Germany. And because I was, you know, one of the top transportation supervisors in my command, my general sent me down to Albania to work that issue. What an honor. And um, while we were traveling, you know, from one area, like from the airport to go to the port, um, I saw how the infrastructure was. It was very poor, um, mm. but the people were humbling. I saw, you know, they have kills on the road, meaning it'll be a goat kill. Uh, um, a oh, so Cory goat, Cor goat on, on, the, on the road. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Everything was just like you went to Carnation Market. I saw that, you know, and I saw it through their eyes that they may look a little bit different from us, but within their heart, they were very humbling. And um, so I didn't mingle, feel like so I was mingle with the people is what you're saying. Yes. If you get there, you mingle, always with the have to. mingle with the people. Yes. All right. Last but not least, Zanzibar. What is that one thing you'd say you must do or must try if you go there? I would say um, the food. I enjoyed the food in Zanzibar because just like us, they love fish. Now, they do eat a little spicy. They're on the spicy side, but I asked for it to be toned down. I love the seafood in Zanzibar. And there is one place in Zanzibar. It was, um, and it's the, the place slipped me right now, but it was a restaurant, The Rock, The Rock I, Restaurant. I I've been in there. Zanzibar. That I've is a there. must do and a must <laughs> see. This restaurant is in the ocean. Yes. Twin, only about 25 people can fit in this restaurant. Yes. And it was amazing. 
was amazing. And then the tide, the tide comes in and you, you get there and you're walking on dry land, uh, kind of on the bridge. Yes. Over. And then, yes. and then when you're leaving, you're like, where did this water come from? And, well, for me, it was the opposite. We had to take the boat out to the restaurant when we got there. It was 4th of July in um, 2021 when I went. We had to take the boat out. And then once we finished our meal, we walked from the restaurant back to land because the time, <laughs> <laughs> it was different. It was so different. Was so different. <laughs> so I'm going to switch up, switch up a little bit now. What's your top two tips? For packing. <laughs> um, take only what you need, not what you want. Because a lot of times we figure that we have to take this shoes and this person, this top, you know, to go um, on our trip. No, take as minimal stuff as possible. I get three luggages when I travel because, you know, I'm in an elite status with a major airline that I fly with. Um, so I get three luggages, but I don't take three luggages with me. It's just too much to take. Um, take what you need. Also research the country. Research, you know, if you have to take any kind of skin protection for mosquitoes or whatever, and look at their cultural demeanor. If you're going to Dubai, you may want to bring a scarf to put on it so that when you go into the mosque, you're covered or you can get it there. But just look what culturally they represent and, you know, dress appropriately. So you're going to take the appropriate clothing. All right. Now, from a planning the trip perspective, um, you know, how do you, what's kind of your system in terms of, of planning? Are you one of these folks where you're like, okay, I turn it all over to the, to the travel agent and, or the travel you know, you know, the travel person, let them book it. I tell them I want to go there and they book. Or are you that person that you dig in, you do the research, you book it, you, you know, you do all of that sort of stuff. What's your system and what do you, and what do you find works? 25% mm -hmm. of my trips, I have gone on with groups, 25%. Some groups are better than some. I will definitely say that. And I recommend groups. However, what works for me is planning it individually, myself, for myself, by myself. That's what works for me because I dive into research before I go into any country. I look at the makeup. I look at how safe it is. I look at where the embassy, if there's an embassy located. I also Google to see if there's a Jamaican restaurant at that in that country, you know, before I go to see where it's located. I, I swear love that. I love that. <laughs> I sure do. I Google where the Jamaican restaurant is. Just like when I went to Nigeria in October, we found the Jamaican restaurant in Abuja. I went to Lagos first, and then we also went to Abuja, and I found the Jamaican restaurant while I was while I was there. So um, I do seventy five percent of my travel. I plan myself. You know, okay. um, for one, sometimes it's cheaper than, you know, going with the group. And I like the personal touch too, as well. You know, when me and my travel partner go, cause that's my ride or die. We travel together everywhere and all the time. Uh, it, you can get more personal with it. You know, um, I've gone to the Maldives two years ago. I'm going back again in, in December. And prior to going, I looked to see what does the Maldives offer for a person like myself? And rest and relaxation, beaches, just like Jamaica. And okay. the people are just as courteous and attentive as, you know, Jamaicans are. All right. So let me let me ask you this. In terms of when you go on one of these long trips, some people are like, like I'll tell you, me personally, it's always like if I'm going this far, I'm going to go to two or, or three countries if I'm going far. You know, uh, and for some people, I know that's kind of the same way they do it because they, they're like, listen, if I'm going far, I'm going to two countries. Um, is that kind of your technique or you're like, listen, I'm focused. I'm going to spend some time here. So I'm spending, you know, two weeks, you know, maybe longer. What's kind of your strategy on on time? 
Well, since I don't really have a lot of time, because right now, you know, I work full time, I'm a doctoral student, and I'm a veterans advocate. So um, time is of essence for me. So when I travel, I concentrate mainly on one or two country, it all depends. Plus, I like to get on a plane and go back. So for example, in December, when I was in South Africa, I could have gone to neighboring um, African countries there, but I chose not to because I want to eventually go back, you know, to like Namibia, Mozambique, um, places like that, you know, go to Kenya. So it's fun for me to take that 16 hour and fly. Some people don't want to take the 16 hours and, you know, and fly to these different countries. Sign me up. I was made for a plane. <laughs> I like that one. I was made for a plane. <laughs> yes. yes. This, I, I'll say this, you know, growing up in Jamaica, I grew up very, very poor, but I grew up in love with love and affection from my grandparents and, you know, extended family. So we didn't have anything. And I used to always say, if I am able to afford it, when I grow up, that's wanna, That's what I want to do. I want to travel. I want to see the world. I want to meet people. I want to learn about culture. And one common denominator that I do learn when I travel to these countries, everybody knows about Jamaica. And I'm so proud. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. You know, my, my daughters, one of my daughters said to me, it's like, you meet anyone and you act and everyone knows at least one thing about Jamaica, no matter yes. where you go, yes. they know yes. one thing, which leads me to this. What has been your funniest or maybe your most inspiring Jamaican experience? Not from, you don't have to go back to the five countries what you are the top, but you could pick any of them. What was either the funniest or most inspiring Jamaican experience you have had where somebody realizes that you're Jamaican and and something happened you know maybe they lit up maybe it got you as I mentioned almost a red carpet treatment maybe it was you know they started singing something can you recall one of them <laughs> well um one incident was when I was in Bosnia um you know, the, the locals, uh, I was at a flea market and the locals started, you know, singing Bob Marley song after they found out, you know, that I was Jamaica because anywhere I go, I may have like a little handkerchief or I may have something that shows Jamaica on my clothes or a t-shirt or whatever. So people normally recognize and they'll ask, are you Jamaican? That's why you have what you have on. And I said, yeah. And they'll start singing Bob Marley or talking reggae, or they'll try to curse a, a bad word which I have to tell them, no, stay away from the bad word if you don't know what it means. But so that, but going back to Ghana, out of all the countries that I've been to, Ghana was the one that really, really took um, really dear to my heart. Because like I said, every time I passed a building out of every 10 car, at least six of them had a Jamaican flag on it. If I put past a, um, a container van that was passing by, it had a Jamaican flag on it. So I was asking them, hey, um, have you been to Jamaica? No. Why do you, you know, promote Jamaica so much? And they said, because they are our sisters and brothers. So that of all the years, the 40 something years I've been traveling the world globally, um, you know, that just resonated to me. They yeah. love us. They love yep. us. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. I can't can't say it enough. If you can, I always tell people, if you can't go to Ghana, go. Yes. You must okay. go to Ghana, mm -hmm. you know? So what would be one piece of advice that you'd give someone who says, you know what, I want to start traveling um, I, and I want to start traveling? No, what would that one piece of advice be? One word, go. <laughs> book your ticket, book your ticket and go. Here's the thing. COVID taught us a lot. COVID taught us that tomorrow is not promised. So many people died. There's also cancer in the world. People are dying, whether it's by accident, they're, you know, um, falling dead suddenly. All these things are happening. So if you're a person who's cultural, want to see the world, want to experience something different, have fun. There's life outside 
of the United States. There's life outside of Canada. There's life outside of Jamaica. You know, I want to see who else and where else people look like me that's doing the same thing. We may speak a different language, but we're all the same. So I say go. And for those who think that it is so expensive to travel, it's not really if you have the right time, the, you know, if you plan appropriately when it comes to time, season, and, um, you know, track the cost, because you can do predictions on many websites like kayak.com, that you can predict when you buy your ticket, go and don't be scared of where you're going. Nobody's going to mess with you. People love you. They want to, um, you know, they want to learn about you as well. So go. And don't be afraid to talk to people when you see them on the street because you're representing your country, whether it's Jamaica, the United States or whatever. I'm representing Jamaica all day long. Amen. Amen. Listen, great, great words of advice. On that note, Delia, thank you. Thank you again for spending some time with us. Yes. And I'm looking forward to seeing on your Facebook timeline, your Instagram timeline, the next places you travel. Thank you, Delia. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Show us some love now. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.